Hey guys, Plowmatcher here, and we're back with another episode of Let's Play Dragon Quest 3. On the last episode, we finally defeated the Archfiend Baramos, completing our main objective. But then we found out that he wasn't the main bad guy. And we fell through a hole and found ourselves in the world of Alephgard. From Dragon Quest 1. Anyways, on this episode, we're going to continue along by going to Ludatorm Castle. Welcome to the town of Ludatorm. Weapon and armor shop. Uh, doesn't look like there's anything we need here except for the silver shield. But there's a better shield to be had elsewhere. So Bermos is really dead? But he was merely an underling of Zoma. Our ancestors came to this land through Gaia's navel. So apparently nobody is from this world. Alright, got a Pachisi ticket. Hey, it's me, Kandar! I'm not bad anymore, but I can't escape this world either. I want to help you out as well, so listen to this. The Sunstone is hidden somewhere inside of Ludatorm Castle. Okay. I'm not sure why I need Sunstone, but... Whatever. When rain and sunlight come together, a rainbow bridge will appear, or so the story goes. book and a wimpy book I'm studying the removal of curses that way I can help anyone who becomes cursed Zoma loves despair hatred and sadness the humans in Olive Guard are ants compared to Zoma burp I'm stuffed my belly feels like it's about to burst. Item shop. Nothing new there. Alephgard is a land of darkness, sealed off from the rest of the world. Here there is only despair. Well, that's depressing. North of here lies a bottomless pit. These are the remains of the Archfiend from when he first came into this world. If you follow this road, you'll eventually come to Ludatorm Castle. Well, I guess we will do just that. One thing I want to note here is that in this version of the game, you get the music from... Ludatorm and Ludatorm Castle that was present in Dragon Quest 1. In the NES version you just get Dragon Quest 3's town and castle music. Welcome to Ludatorm Castle. And you say the same thing. Good luck brave heroes. Uh, he actually restores our MP just like the same dude does in Dragon Quest 1. Zoma stole and hid the weapons and armor from this castle. He must have feared them or else he would never have wasted his time. Empty! 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 There was a time when many people used to stay here, but now we don't get any customers at all. Anything in here? Pachisi ticket, nice. And boxer shorts. I have to return to Guy's Naval and report this, but I'm afraid to go out there.
You're from Aliahan? I've heard that name before. Some man who came through here was also from that same place. Could it be? But no, he was said to have died. I've heard that Rubus created this country. However, Zoma has apparently sealed Rubus away with a curse. Well, let's see. Meow. Well, if memory of Dragon Quest 1 serves correct, there should be a staircase down here. A sunstone? There's nothing like that here. But it's odd. I had a dream that someone gave me such a stone when the darkness faded. Tent. <laughs> Foreshadowing. There's lots of little treats like that in uh, this version of Alephgard for people who have played Dragon Quest 1. thought of even defeating Zoma seems unreal, but if you obtain the King's Sword, Armor of Light, and the Hero's Shield, you might actually have a shot. They all used to be located in this castle. This is the kitchen. Really? Alright, another small metal. Alright, now there's nothing that's actually going to uh, point you in this direction, but uh, yeah, secret room right here. Agility seed, nice. Go ahead and give that seed to our hero. Nice, four points. And we'll open the chest. The sunstone! Now we will go talk to the king. If you look across the sea from this castle, you can see the castle of Zoma off in the distance. I believe that someday we will finally see the light again. This is the chamber of King Lars. Rumor has it that the fairy's flute is in the village of Kal. Village of Kal is to the east of here. If you have a ship, then you'd better use the western sea and go around the continent via the southern route. I'm the one who cared for Ortega. He had terrible burns and collapsed outside of the castle. He continually had trouble remembering things until finally he could recollect only his name. So Ortega is alive. If you're going on a trip, then please allow me to sing you a song for your departure. From distant shores, far away, came the hero whose name is Joshua. Many brave heroes have set out to kill Zoma, but none have returned. Not even Ortega. He came from the world above? I'm this country's king, King Lars. You might have already heard about me. Unfortunately, I can't rid my country of this current state of despair. Is there anything that you can do to help us? And then he does the normal kingly duties of telling us our experience to the next level and saving our game. Which we will go ahead and do. Well, actually, there is more to explore out here. Here we can actually access the roof. What? You came here from the world above to defeat Zoma? Yes. You're not from around here, are you? Well, surely you will get lost here, so allow me to help you. Please take this. It's a map to help keep you from getting lost. Alright, the fairy map is just the Alucard version of the magic map. Nothing real special about it. And that's all there is up here. Alright, now, before we continue on, there's a few things I need to show off. Now, whenever you want to leave Alephgard, you need to use Return to go somewhere else. First thing I need to show off is Portoga. There is an item we can now get here since we have defeated Baramos. 
Ah, to finally see my Carlos again. Thank you so much. As a token of my appreciation, I would like to give you the sword. It's been handed down in my family for generations. Sword of Seduction is a strange sword, only usable by women. Now, this is a sword that will cast chaos on enemies. It can be useful, but it can only be used as an item in battle by uh, female characters, and honestly, it's not that great a weapon to actually equip. Anyways, the second thing I want to show off is near Aliahan. It's a little island. You're never at any point in the game required to actually go here. And I honestly completely forgot about it until I saw it on the map. But it's not far from Aliahan. Welcome to the village of Luzami. This island has been long forgotten by the rest of the world, me included. We haven't seen any travelers in many years. Did you know that the world is a sphere rotating in space? That's why the stars and the sun appear to move and the horizon is rounded. But nobody believes me. The world is round and rotating in outer space. Okay. I don't know how I knew that was there. It just it looked like a suspicious spot. I am a prophet. <coughs> I have foreseen you. <coughs> ah, something caught in my throat there. Ah. I am a prophet. I have foreseen your visit here. The Archfiend's castle lies deep in the Necrogon Mountains. To reach it, you'll need to hurl the Gaia Sword into the volcano. Only then will the path to his castle be revealed. So this is actually the place where you get hints about needing the Gaia Sword and where to get it from. Alright, got a muscle guide book. Nothing there. A lucky book. Oh, yeah, I also figured out that Seek Out is actually a really useful ability for finding uh, mini medals. Because if one is on the screen you're on, it will glitter when you use this ability. But apparently there's nothing in here. See if there's anything else in this town. There's one chest here still. It's probably over here. Yep, you see that little glitter right there? That indicates an item hidden on the ground. So that will make the search for uh, many metals a whole lot more bearable. Anyways, we'll go ahead and use that Lux Seed on our hero. Thank you for coming, but we... Unfortunately, we have nothing to sell to you. But I'll tell you a story I heard a long time ago. Legend has it that a man named Simon used to own the Gaia Sword. Hopefully you will find that information to be useful. Well, I might have found it to be useful if I didn't already know it. Anyway, that's all there is to this town. Now we will head back to Alephgard, which by the way, you can actually return to every town in Alephgard, which is very nice. It cuts out some of the monotony of traveling all over Alephgard that Dragon Quest 1 presented, since in that game you could only uh, return to Ludatorm. Anyways, that about does it for this episode. If you like my videos, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, tell your friends about it, and I will see you guys later.